Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I will give a brief introduction about the International Load Line Convention. I will also discuss the difference between a normal cargo ship load line and timber ship load line. And finally, in the part 2 of this video, I will explain how to prepare the ship for the load line survey. International Convention on Load Lines was adopted on 5th of April 1966 and it came into force on 21st July 1968. Let me talk a bit about the contents because sometimes this is one of the questions which is asked in the oral examinations. So this particular convention has three annexes and annex one is divided into four chapters. So if you can think of it like this, three A's and four C's, three areas and four conditions. In the load line convention, what are the three areas? We have summer, winter and tropical. So these are the big three areas in which the whole world is divided. And still in these three areas, there are four conditions. The additional condition to the three areas is winter North Atlantic, which is an added condition to the load line marks. So I hope this trick will help you remember the contents that there are three areas and four conditions. So there are three annexes. And there are four chapters to the first annex. Now let's talk about the four chapters. The first chapter of annex one is general, which is usual for most of the conventions. Then the second chapter for the load line convention is condition of assignments of freeboard. Assignment of freeboard is what this whole convention is based on. All the load line marks which are provided, what is actually happening is they calculate how much freeboard will be safe based on the number of subdivisions the ship has, which means the capacity of the ship to sustain damage and the intact stability of the ship. Then the chapter three talks about freeboard again. And finally, the fourth chapter is the special requirement for ship assigned with timber freeboard. Why a special requirement for these ships? Because when you're carrying timber on the deck, inherently the cargo itself is buoyant. So which adds to the buoyancy of the ship Thus, a special lesser freeboard requirement for this ship. And the remaining two annexes, Annex 2 covers the zones, areas and seasonal periods. And Annex 3 contains the certificates, including the International Load Line Certificate. Basically, the whole convention is into three parts. One is for the ship, amount of freeboard that will be assigned to it based on what all conditions. Annex 2 is for the world, how to divide the world into various zones based on the weather conditions and seasonal periods. And then finally, Annex 3, which gives guidance on what all certificates are issued as per the International Load Line Convention. So from the contents, it's quite clear that the regulation takes into account the potential hazards that are present in different zones and different seasons. The technical annex contains additional safety measures concerning doors, freeing ports, hatchways and other items. The main purpose of these measures is always to ensure the watertight integrity of the ship's hull below the freeboard deck. And finally, as per the convention, all assigned load lines must be marked amidship on each side of the ship. Together with the deck line, ships which are intended to carry timber deck cargo are assigned a smaller freeboard as the deck cargo in that case provides protection against the impact of waves. Often in the oral examinations, it is asked, draw the load line or draw the timber load line. So here is a difference between these two load lines. On the left hand side of the plimsoll mark is the timber load line. And on the right hand side is the normal load line. On the right hand side, if you can see the summer load line as usual aligns with the plimsoll line. And from there, it's 1 by 48 of the summer draft to the winter load line and the tropical load line mark. And winter North Atlantic mark is 50 mm below the winter mark. Now let's talk about the timber load line. For the timber load line, it starts with the assigned lumber draft, which is your lumber summer draft. And from that particular point, the lumber winter draft is 1 by 36 of the summer draft. And to the tropical, it's the normal 1 by 48 of the lumber draft. And lumber winter north atlantic mark is same as the normal load line winter north atlantic mark. Now I would repeat a little bit about the timber load line mark. First there is a assigned lumber draft. So from that point 
to the lumbar winter load line it's 1 by 36 and 1 by 48 to the lumbar tropical draft as in the cases of normal draft marks the reading increases as we go above similarly in the lumbar draft 36 is the number which is on the lower side and 48 is on the above side so this is a trick that you can use to remember that 1 by 36 is to the winter and 1 by 48 is to the tropical so this covers the difference between the two kinds of load lines i hope this was a useful video for you if you have any feedback suggestion or comment then please do write down below all the best for your exams and as always thank you for watching